Hello and welcome to this lecture where we will be discussing solutions of ordinary differential equations using a computer. So, we will focus on initial value problems and initial value problems may be most simply suppose this is the problem that we have. So, the left hand side may be discretized. as such yielding this should be minus a very simple method to perform the integration. However, this method is only first order accurate that is it is not very accurate and so one usually resorts to higher order methods and the most popular higher order method is the the Runge-Kutta methods which are usually fourth order accurate or so on. So, there can be other methods which are even having uh, which are having even higher accuracies, but the workhorse of all initial value problems may be described in terms of the Runge-Kutta methods. So, in this method we have the update. So, in this case say we have x at n plus 1 is equal to x n plus 1 by 6 times k 1 plus k 2 plus k 3 plus k 4 where now k 1 is equal to h times f at. So, this f in general can be a function of x and t. So, x n and t n similarly k 2 is equal to h multiplied by f at x n plus k 1 by 2 t n plus h by 2 k 3 equal to h times f of x n plus k 2 by 2 t n plus h by 2 and lastly k 4 is equal to x n plus k 3 and t n plus h. So, in contrast to this method where we have used the values at just two nodes x n or I mean if this if we plot it as a time series, then we have the values at t n and t n plus 1. So, whatever the value or in this case t n and t n minus 1 so whatever the value is here is obtained solely in terms of this particular value. However, in this in these higher order methods apart from having something at n and n plus 1, we also have contributions from the half step. So, this particular value, this value, this value and this value all are sort of done in a weighted average sense. So, this is like a weighted average. So, this should be 2. So, this is like a weighted average and one obtains what the solution is at the next time step. So, these are sort of the weighting factors. So, that the thing at n plus half if we, if we may call this are taken at twice the weight is done the end points. So, this is the standard RK4 algorithm, but if we implement everything in uh, MATLAB or octave we can make use of their inbuilt time stepper. So, these, thi these kind of things are known as time stepping. Here the parameter h is equal to t n plus 1 minus t n and we are sort of stepping in time. We were at this particular time and then we stepped at this particular time. So, the time stepping 
is accomplished inside these uh, these functions and we don't have to bother so much so what we need to actually take care is of the definition we, we need to define the function so that the computer knows what kind of function evaluation the, the computer has to do in order to perform a time step so let us consider the an example so a very simple example which also has an analytical solution the function is so let's solve dx dt is equal to minus e raised to minus t times x square subjected to x at t raised to 0 is equal to 2. So, let us see how we can solve this analytically. So, we have d x by x square is equal to minus e raised to minus t d t implies minus 1 by x equal to minus e raised to minus t by minus 1 plus c which implies minus 1 by x is equal to e raised to minus t. plus c using the initial condition we have minus 1 by 2 is equal to 1 plus c implying c equal to minus 3 by 2 thus the solution obtained is x equal to minus 1 by e raised to minus t minus 3 by 2. So, let us see how the solution looks like. So, first we remove all the variables and clear the screen, then we define t as lin space zero to maybe five in st steps of uh, in, uh, taking hundred points and then we define the solution x sol is equal to minus 1 by exponential of minus t minus 3 by 2 then we plot t comma x sol then we increase this size we set the y level. We save the file to a convenient location, change the directory and there we go. This is the solution that we obtain, it is a decaying solution and as so we, we should be able to judge what happens as t tends to infinity e raise to minus t becomes 0 so x tends to 2 by 3 from this particular solution so let's also draw the asymptote of 2 by 3 so we declare this as figure 1 and then we say figure 1 hold on plot and then we just simply plot a line which shows the limit and we make it a dashed line. Okay, so, this is the asymptotic limit as x tends to as t tends to infinity we get a value of 2 by 3. So, this means there is nothing special about this on top of the plot I have simply done the plot 
of a line connecting x equal to 0 and y equal to 2 by 3 to a point x equal to 5 and y equal to 2 by 3. So, basically this line and made it into a dashed line having a red color. It is very easy. But from this, we should now solve the problem using the Runge-Kutta method. So, if someone is using MATLAB, then the name of the function is ODE45, indicating that it is solving an ODE using the fourth order accuracy or fifth order accuracy as desired. But if someone is using octave, then one has to use the function called as LSODE. Okay. And we will see what we close the figure. So, we can see what the function requires us to say. So, LSOD is a function used to solve ODs of the form dx dt equal to f x comma t. So, if you have a doubt regarding how what function is the thing, where can I find more information? So, one can simply write doc comma the name of the function. So, the function outputs x the state and if there is a message returned from the solver, we have to give as an input the function, the initial condition, the t and the critical time. Okay. For our purpose, the critical time is not of great use. However, we can have, I mean one can look into uh, various kind of integration methods like Adam's method. We can tell whether the Jacobian is to be used or not. We can tell the initial step size, what is the maximum order of the solution that must be used. Okay. We have to tell all these things. So, there are certain examples as well and to have a better view, one can always look into these files, these documentation files. So, let us try to solve this. So, to solve this, one must have a separate file which will contain the information about what kind of function evaluation that the function does. So, we create a new file, we write function x dot is equal to my func, just give it some name my func x comma t. So, this function requires as an input x comma time and the output of the function will be this entity. So, we write here x dot, x dot. So, the way to write a function is function, this is the keyword, the output variables equal to name of function. name of the function and in the brackets the input variables okay and the name the file has to be saved using this exact name so we cannot use any other name for this file but we have to name the file as myfunk okay if you use any other file the the other function will not the other program will not be able to understand whether this is a function or not and it will be confused. So, rather we have to use this name. So, we have to return exactly this value. So, we say this equal to minus exponential of minus t times x square. So, whatever inputs we obtain from x and t, we will do a function evaluation as this minus e raise to minus t times x square and put whatever the output we have from this into x dot and this x dot is then spit out from the function. Now, we must have another script to call this function. So, we first define t equal to lin space 0, 5. 
actually we should do this in the other file itself. So, in the same file where we have done the analytical solution, we will call this as maybe ok, we, we let t be t. So, we have already defined the array of t. Then we simply do x which is the numerical solution equal to l s o d within quotes my func the initial condition which is simply 2 then the array over which the solution is desired. And in the end we do figure 1 hold on plot t comma x and maybe we put symbols. and we make it a white marker. Okay. There you go, running the file, the file runs almost instantaneously and we see that the numerical solution denoted by the markers is closely, very closely following in fact the solution, the exact solution and both are giving us the asymptote. So, this is how we solve very easily rather an ordinary differential equation, an initial value problem. So, now what if? So, this is very useful if you have just maybe something of first order. If you have something higher order, then one must take an effort to split that into a system of first order differential equations. Let us see how that can be done. Let us consider the simple harmonic motion sin x, this should be sin t. So, in this case let us define d x by d t is equal to y and d y by d t is equal to thus sin t or essentially we can write this as d x 1 d t equal to x 2 and d x 2 d t is equal to sin t. So, this can also be written as d d t of x 1 x 2 is equal to yeah, so anyway this is just a different set of differential equations which we must then solve the video is supposed to be cut here okay. so now clearly we the function that we define should should spit out two variables rather than just one. So, we can make use of arrays. So, let us see how this can be achieved. So, first let us define the function second order, two order. So, let us say it is not two order, this should be x dot is equal to two order x comma t. But here it is to be understood that x and x dot are not just single scalars, but they are vectors rather than having just one value, they will now output two values. So, x dot 1 will be equal to x 2 and x dot 2 will be equal to sin of t. Okay. So, now when we go back here, we will then say t equal to lin space 
0 to 2 comma 40 for example and then we will write x equal to l s o d e and let us say the initial conditions in this problem are d x d t at t equal to 0 is equal to 1 and and x at t equal to 0 is equal to 2. Let us say these are the initial conditions with which we are working with and we have to pass these as an array. So, 1 comma 2 and then we have to pass the time vector and the output of this file will be sent to the variable x which we can then plot. So, let us first see what this what the output object looks like. Okay. So, the way to do it is so size of x is equal to 40 rows and 2 columns. So, x all rows of the first column is holding the solution x 1, x all rows of the second column is holding x 2. Okay. It outputs something in which whatever we have defined as x 1 and x 2 are like defined in this way. All these values are x 1, all these values are x 2. So, the way to extract the data is to say x 1 equal to x all comma 1, x 2 equal to x all comma 2. So, we can then plot x and basically the other thing is d x d t, where x 2 is understood to be equal to d x d t from this equation. So, we essentially obtain the solution for x and d x d t. Okay, so, let us see. So, these are, these are the two solutions. So, x starts at 1, rather x starts at 2 and d x d t is going like this. So, let, to differentiate between the two plots, we can set a different color. This is red and this is dotted line with blue. Okay, there you go. So, we have used by mistake I have set x equal to 1. So, I should have put x equal to 2, but I have put x equal to 1, but we can fix that very easily. This is a good. Okay, these are the solutions. Now, we can also view the solution in a phase plane. So, to view the solution in the phase, phase, phase space and viewing the solution in the phase space is very important if you want to solve nonlinear differential equations because then the phase space solution tells you about how the solution behaves near certain points because the position and velocity are usually coupled by means of the function that we want to solve. So, we do figure 2 plot x 1 comma x 2.
Okay. So, using this we are able to plot in the phase space the plot of position and velocity. We do not have explicit time signals, but rather we are trying to plot what the dependency of position and velocity for this particular initial condition looks like. So, it looks something like this and so now if we change we do a hold on so that by changing the various initial conditions we should be able to observe what really happens if the initial. So, for example, if say the initial velocity is decreased d x d t if it is made less then how does the dynamics in the phase plane look like. So, we can easily do that now by changing the initial condition say it becomes 0 0.1 rather than. So, this is how the phase plane diagram looks like if we make it larger and this is how it looks like. Okay. And so, by means of this we are able to judge what really happens in phase space for the plot and we can sort of understand that in such a system whether it will behave in a more stable manner or it will diverge everywhere these are the kind of problems. So, beyond point it is not able to solve for example. Okay, it is not able to go to, no no it, so the time series truncates at this point I mean let us see how the actual time series looks like time series looks like this in the phase plane it looks like this. So, in order to understand the entire phase space diagram by changing the initial conditions what we can do is embed the whole thing in a double loop. So, for x naught going from maybe minus 0 0.1 or let us say just going from 0 0.1 to 1 in steps of this and for v naught going from minus 0 0.5 in steps of 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 maybe we can take slightly smaller steps. and then we keep plotting this. So, essentially we are choosing the initial conditions in a loop and then seeing how the trajectories look like in the phase space. However, we have to now replace these by x 0 and v 0. These are the two initial conditions supplied to the solver and at the end of it we do not really need the time series. So, we can comment this. Okay. So, we need two ends to demarcate this and 
the end of it all, it is good to indent the code. So, we need two ends and we also need to have all the labels are drawn over here. And so, with this we can draw now draw all the trajectories like this. So, with all the initial conditions, these are the trajectories how it will look like. So, all the trajectories are evolving towards infinity. In various special cases, if you have nonlinear ODEs, you can sometimes find something known as slow manifolds or central manifolds. And these are the so the 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 curve quickly goes from this line and settles onto this line. So, this can be identified as a sort of an asymptotic behavior of the velocity and displacement. Okay. So, anyway, so with this example, with these two examples, we are able to understand how we can solve ordinary differential equations with the help of all these tools available to us. And more importantly, because these are modular, we can rapidly make changes and understand if something is going wrong or where we need to tweak the initial conditions. And we can do a quick analysis of all the initial conditions to really understand what the system really behaves like. In the next class, we will try to do a solution of the Blasius solution, which is very common in boundary layer theory. And in that, we will see how something called the shooting method can be implemented with this framework. With that, uh, with this, so we end the class today. Thank you.